If you thought SolarWinds was huge, then wait till you hear about this massive cyber attack that was just revealed. Hi everybody, welcome to Studio Sec. Thank you for watching. Like this video if it's helpful. Comment down below with your thoughts on this massive, massive news that's breaking and subscribe for more content. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'm posting more every week. Earlier this year and late last year, we talked about the solar winds breach and it was absolutely massive. Uh, some estimates have shown that up to eight, 18,000 organizations have been affected. And really today, we're still in cleanup to some extent. However, by now, most organizations have already done their threat briefs they have decided what their threat profile is to that breach, and a lot of organizations are starting to roll over to the recovery phase. However, everybody that worked on that is gonna have some good job security because of this massive hack. You see, it's believed that China hacked Exchange. Yes, the mail client that Microsoft hosts. Now again, I wanna offer a disclaimer on attribution. Attribution is very hard. We've talked about it a few other times on this channel, but again, if you're new, just know that attribution is incredibly difficult. We often say that an APT, the one that is the threat actor behind the attack, but it can often be difficult to actually attribute an attack to an individual or group uh, until you have like written confessions or something like that. We'll talk a little bit about the APT behind this attack, but we wanna talk a little bit about this attack itself. Well, it's believed that over 30,000 organizations have been affected. And according to Krebs on Security, this is kind of measured by one server kind of equals its own organization, so the number might actually actually be less than that, but we're gonna go kind of with what it's being reported here and just say 30,000 organizations have been affected. And kind of why that is because each server is an email server, so I mean, some organizations might have more than one email server if it's a larger organization, but again, we're just kind of going with what everyone's saying. Now this attack targeted older versions of Microsoft Exchange. Uh, it's believed that it targeted from versions sometime between 2012 to 2019. And Microsoft actually released some patches and we'll talk about that here in a moment. However, it was using zero day attacks and it actually used up to four zero day. Now, like I said, Microsoft released patches uh, to mitigate exposure to this attack. Update your stuff. However, in larger organizations, as you may know, updating services can be incredibly difficult. And the reason for that is compatibility issues. There's all kinds of things that can happen whenever you update a program or an application or a service that everyone relies on but that has some integration with other services. You wanna make sure that you're not taking away availability. And so a lot of organizations might delay upgrading to the newest possible version. And that's kind of where a lot of vulnerabilities appear in different organizations. Obviously for something like this, it's kind of, I mean, it's mission critical that you update your email server. You don't want the Chinese to just break in right now. And there's been evidence that they've actually accelerated their attack due to the patch that Microsoft released. It seems that the threat actor actually automated the attack shortly around the time that Microsoft released the patch to try to spread this attack as far as possible before more people implemented the patch. Now this happened with over 30,000 organizations affected, which is to say around 30,000 email servers have been affected. Now these are the things we know that 30,000 number, we know that Microsoft released a patch, we know that the threat actor is still very much active in this situation, and we know that the threat actor used more than one zero day to implement this attack. What we don't know is whether or not access is still present on the affected machines. Now, if you upgrade uh, and get the patch, that should hopefully resolve the issue for you. However, if you haven't implemented the patch yet, you might still be looking at having access handed over to the adversary. Now here's what we don't yet know, who those 30,000 organizations are. Surely there's gonna be a healthy mix of private and public sector organizations represented in this number, but specific names have not yet come out. We also don't know how many people and how much money this attack will ultimately affect and cost. SolarWinds, for instance, cost over $90 million just in cyber insurance alone, and according to some estimates, 
estimates, it could cost up to $100 billion by the time it's all said and done, just in insurance damages and human labor trying to fix the situation. We also aren't exactly sure what the attackers are after in this attack, what kind of information they're looking for. And this could be derived by knowing who is affected. For instance, in solar winds, what makes it so challenging is just the size and scope of the attack. The threat actor may not have been trying to gain access to every single organization that they wound up getting access to. However, that size and scope kind of in a way helps them, it obfuscates who they're really after. It looks like it's just a gigantic campaign targeting everybody, but they might really be after just a select few organizations that they knew were using solar winds. Well, likewise, that could be the same here. This attack just blew up and it obfuscates who they're actually after. They may not be after all 30,000. They might be after a specific number of organizations that we might hear about later. However, they could be after all 30,000. That's the thing, we really don't know and it's gonna take some time and some public briefings by some of these organizations that have been affected uh, just kind of saying, you know, hey, here's what we found. Here's what data we know was out exfiltrated and that will kind of give the rest of us an idea on what the threat actor itself was after. Now let's talk a little bit about the threat actor. This threat actor, again, is believed to be out of China. Their threat actor name is nicknamed Hafnium. And if you Google Hafnium, you're probably gonna find all kinds of news articles about this. And you're also probably gonna find some information on the element, but not necessarily on the threat actor itself. And that's because it's really a recently discovered threat app. Now again, it is believed that they're from China. It's believed that they are state sponsored, but it's also known Known that they do like to rent server space in the United States. So just a nice little quirk about them. They're quirky, they're a quirky bunch. Now let's talk a little bit specifically about these zero days that were used. Up to four zero days were actually used in this attack. One was a server side request forgery zero day. One was a remote code execution zero day. And then the other two allowed for writes to files on the different systems that they were targeting. Now it appears from what I've seen already that this was kind of a bit of a slow grind for them at the start. However, as they began to gain traction, as they began to infect more systems, and of course, as Microsoft began to put out a patch, they actually automated this attack and that allowed the affected number to balloon into 30,000 different organizations. Now, what can you do? If you're watching this video, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, if you're using Microsoft Exchange, obviously implement the patch that Microsoft put out and then stay tuned for guidance from CISA, from Microsoft, from other cybersecurity researchers out there. They're going to be studying this in depth and they'll be putting out very critical research. Already, CISA and Microsoft have recommended not only implementing the patch, but not trusting external communication. And that's kind of one of those best practices where you don't wanna really trust communications with outside nodes. I mean, you don't know who they are, you don't know what they're after or what data they're after. And as we can see, not only from solar ones, but from this attack as well as other attacks, that's often how you can tell that an attacker has breached and they're trying to exfiltrate data is you're seeing data being sent out to an external IP address that you don't really recognize or trust. Now another thing that you can do is put your exchange server behind a VPN and not allowing it to reach the internet. Now that's also best practice. So definitely think about how you can deploy that if you're a smaller organization, that might be a little bit more challenging, but again, it's gonna be cheaper for you to do that than it will for you to have to recover from a massive cyber attack. So if we're talking about a cost benefit analysis, the cost is some money and the benefit, you're protecting yourself from cyber attack, but on the flip side, the, the benefit of not implementing this is you're not spending that money, but the cost potentially could be just, it could absolutely dwarf any other costs you might have right now. So we'll be continuing on this channel to look at the situation. We're also doing all kinds of other cool things on this channel. So do subscribe. I, I really look forward to seeing you guys next time.